All right, so um, as I was saying, uh, yes, this is a Halloween decoration, but I'm using it today um, to reiterate this concept of origin versus insertion and how those um, attachment sites actually give rise to different actions. Um, and so hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate this on the chicken as well. Uh, but for now, um, remember that the origin is the more stable attachment point the insertion is the more movable or less stable attachment site. Um, and so origins insertions on opposite sides of the joints are going to produce opposite or antagonistic actions. So um, today we are going to be looking at the leg, right? So I know the chicken leg looks different to us, but it is shockingly similar as hopefully I will, as hopefully you will appreciate here soon. Um, but essentially the thigh bone is the femur, right? The, um, the drumstick is the calf, so the tibia and the fibula. Um, and so we are going to be looking at the hip joint as well as the knee joint, okay? And so the chicken leg itself would actually be the foot. Um, and that has been cut off, um, presumably from your chickens, unless it's a super fresh chicken, in which case, super cool, good for you. Okay, so um, we have muscles that are attached to the front side of our knee, as well as to the back side of our knee. And so what I've done is I've attached some strings here. This one, the insertion point is on the front of the knee, actually on the front of the tibia. And this one over here is on the back of the knee, right? So also on the tibia, but on the back side of the tibia. And so um, if both of these are representing insertions, right? The origins would be farther up here on the hip or on the femur. And so when insertion is pulled towards origin, okay, what we get is an extension, right? Like a kicking out of the leg, right? So what I'm doing now is I am pulling on the string, pulling on the insertion on the front side of the knee, and the action that's going to produce is kicking out, right? This is actually called extension at the knee, okay? Now, if we were to pull on the other insertion, so pulling insertion towards origin, what we would see is exactly the, <laughs> exactly the opposite movement, okay? Um, and so these are antagonistic actions. The insertions are on opposite sides of the joint, the insertion point, the more movable point here, because it's farther away from the body, right? The leg, the thigh is much closer to the stable portion of the body. And so stable point, movable point, when the sarcomeres shorten, the insertion is pulled towards the origin, right? So kicking out or extension at the knee versus flexion at the knee. Okay. Uh, does that make sense? Is that, is that okay? <laughs> um, it works this way for everything. Um, so an attachment on the uh, lateral side of the shoulder is going to produce this kind of emotion. An attachment point on the other side of the shoulder is going to pull in and out and in and out. Right. Um, and so we'll get into those details um, starting in our next lesson together for exam number three. Um, but I just wanted to reiterate that because on exam number two, I will give you an origin, I will give you an insertion, and you should be able to see, right, if this is the insertion, this is the origin, the entire limb is pulled up towards the origin. Okay. Um, and so um, today, when we look at the chicken leg, um, which does not look like um, this right here, um, you know, even though, you know, people joke about having chicken legs or whatever, um, it does look a little bit different, but the same concepts are in play. Just like I showed you on our Mr. Bones over here, um, there are going to be muscles on the chicken leg that are on the anterior side of the chicken leg. So those are the quadriceps femoris, the quads of the chicken. Right. Um, these muscles are going to insert right here, lateral to the kneecap or the patella bone. Okay. So when these muscles shorten, the entire drumstick, right, the calf, is going to kick 
out. And I hope that I can show you this um, on the actual chicken leg today as well. Um, on the other side, right? So on the, um, the uh, popliteal region over here, um, the back of the knee on the chicken, as well as on the model, these are the hamstrings. So these are on the back of your thigh here. Okay, when these muscles shorten, so sarcomeres are shortening, they're going to pull the insertion, the back of the calf up towards the glute, right? We're getting to all of these things later, but for now, when we pull up on the hamstrings, you're essentially pulling your foot, or the chicken's foot, up towards the glute or up towards the rest of the body. Okay. Um, so um, as I'm going to show you here in a minute, I am asking for you to identify the quads right, on the chicken. So the front of the thigh, the hamstrings, the back of the thigh, and your big pretty calf muscle here, right, that we would you know, normally see through the skin. This is the gastrocnemius. Right? There's actually a lot of calf muscles, but this is the one we're focusing on today. Um, all right, so those are going to be important concepts for the chicken dissection as well. This is the knee, right? and so this is going to be something that you're going to uh, study in detail, starting with exam three material. Um, but for now, just for a little bit of orientation, this bone up here is the femur, so this is the thigh bone. This is the shin, so the tibia and the skinnier one is the fibula. This is the patella or the kneecap. Okay. And we can see lots of connective tissue stuff here. This is essentially the tendon from those quadriceps muscles, those uh, front thigh muscles from right up here. Okay. Um, on the chicken dissection today, we are going to look at the muscles and look at the muscles and look at the muscles down here. Then we're actually going to make an incision along uh, the posterior side of the knee. So through the popliteal region here. And what I would like you to see is a couple different structures, right? So here's the knee bent, right? So you're sitting down right now, this is the bent knee. We can see that there are some connective tissue structures inside. These are called cruciate ligaments. And if you're an athlete, maybe you are very familiar with these because these get messed up all the time and it's very painful and, um, <laughs> rough, um, but these are the cruciate ligaments. This one in particular is the anterior cruciate ligament. And essentially it prevents your shin from um, essentially sliding in front of your knee, okay? So when you are doing the chicken leg dissection, um, whenever you get to it, and of course you're going to see it today, you are actually looking for little strappy white shiny ligaments that connect the femur and the tibia and they're actually within the knee capsule. Okay. Um, what you will also see are these little things right here. Okay, so these are little fibrocartilage discs similar to the discs in your back and your spine. Um, and so these here are called, well, a meniscus or two menisci, right? So two um, fibrocartilage cushions so that when you're doing jumping jacks, when you're jogging, your femur isn't grinding down on your poor tibia and leading to lots of damage that takes a really long time if ever to actually heal. Okay, so that'll be tomorrow's lesson as well. Okay, um, so uh, hopefully this little bit of perspective will help. The patella is embedded within a lot of connective tissue on the chicken as well. When you cut through part of the knee, you will see a strappy, shiny little white thing, a cruciate ligament, and these little flappy discs here, a meniscus. Okay, uh, any questions so far? That's kind of wild. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the dissection itself, okay? Um, all right, so what exactly are you going to need? Um, of course, you need your chicken. Um, I have purchased a, uh, you know, a full chicken, right? This is called a whole frying chicken or a broiler chicken. Um, so I will show you how to remove the leg from the chicken if you haven't gotten it already cut up for you, um, hopefully. So little bonus, little life skills. Um, you'll kind of learn how to partially quarter a chicken today. Um, and so it's so much cheaper to buy a whole chicken and cut it up yourself than it is to buy um, the little ones. So 
you know, life is hard right now. Money is short for many of us. Um, and so buying like this is much cheaper than buying just the legs themselves. Okay, so we'll get there. Um, so obviously you need the chicken or the chicken leg. Um, everything else that I have today is um, literally from my kitchen. It is like stuff from Goodwill, <laughs> um, no joke. Um, so like not fancy knives, not fancy anything. Um, so presumably you can have this kind of stuff or even nicer um, in your own kitchen. Okay, so um, I have a cutting board um, and I have a series of knives. Again, not fancy, they're not even stainless steel. Um, so like from Goodwill knives, um, you can use, uh, you know, whatever you have laying around. Um, what I recommend is a knife or using a knife without a serrated edge. Um, so as we can see here, um, this is nice and smooth. Okay, as opposed to, oops, <laughs> uh, a serrated knife. We can see that there are like little jagged edges here. Um, this is for cutting, um, you know, essentially bread or cooked meat or something like that's what the steak knife is for or the serrations. Um, I would recommend um, cutting raw meat like this here with something that um, is smooth, right? So no serrations whatsoever. Um, and of course, uh, my preference is using massive knives like this. <laughs> um, you are more than welcome to encourage to use something cute and little like a paring knife. Um, again, um, whatever you have laying around is okay. I've seen students use serrated knives. Um, it's just they have to like hack through the tissue um, with something like this. Um, and so you're actually destroying the tissue that you're trying to look at. Um, so ideally, straight knife as opposed to something with serration. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, you do not have to use gloves. Um, in fact, um, you know, whenever I am preparing meat or butchering or doing this kind of thing, I do not use gloves. Um, I will use one glove today um, so that I can take it off and I can touch the computer and everything um, without getting uh, bacteria all over my computer. Um, I have seen students use gloves. I've seen them not use gloves. Um, I recommend um, if it doesn't wig you out, not using gloves because then you can actually feel the differences um, in the tissue types. Okay, so that is my suggestion for you, but uh, you know, whatever makes you comfortable, right? So be safe. Remember which end of the blade is sharp, right? Watch where your fingers are. Um, and essentially you are cutting meat like you would in your own kitchen if that's something that's part of your practice. All right, so any, any questions right now? Oh, do you want us to record like the full video of us doing it or do you want pictures? Um, so that is a great question. Let me show you what I have on Blackboard. All right, so uh, this was put up this morning, the chicken leg dissection. This is a link for the actual submission process, right? So you click on this and you know you submit it right here. You did that last week with the physio X assignment. All right, but what exactly are we looking for? Um, couple different options. You can dissect the chicken like all the way through and then go back and take photographs of the different structures that I want you to label. Okay, and you can like either like point to stuff on the chicken leg or you can like stick pins in it or you can just take a photo and then label it um, on your computer, whatever works for you. Um, I just want to see that you know what the structures are. Um, the other option is that you can video it, right? So you can either video yourself walking through the process or when it's all done, you can say, this is this and this is this and that's that. Kind of like um, I do with the model videos for you guys. Um, so you can, uh, yeah, again, take photographs, put them into a Word or Google Slides or whatever kind of document, um, labeled photographs, or you can submit a movie file. Um, this is definitely, um, the most cantankerous option. <laughs> um, oftentimes these files do not come through very well. Um, Blackboard does something crazy with them or it's just like a Mac to PC thing or I, I'm not sure. So this movie file is not the ideal option um, as far as I'm concerned. But um, if that's all you can do, that's fine. Um, you could submit or you can upload your video to YouTube. 
make it unlisted and give me the link, right? So all I want to see is that you know what these structures are, that you did the thing, and um, you know you, you have an understanding of how these tissues actually work together to form the entire limb. Um, any questions about submission of, of files, links, whatever? All right, um, so what exactly are we looking for? Um, I want you to tell me whether it is a right or a left leg. That seems really pedantic, but uh, this gets confused all the time. And so um, I want to know if it's right or left, okay? Um, on the upcoming practical, you're gonna have to say the right, this bone, the left, that bone. So just start getting used to that now. Um, I want you to show me the skin and fascia. So connective tissue deep to the skin that's actually attaching it to the underlying muscle. I want you to show me fat as well as blood vessels. Um, these three here are muscles that I just talked about on the model. Okay, um, So the quads are in the front, hamstrings are in the back of the thigh, and then the gastrocnemius is the big pretty calf muscle. Um, tendons, type of muscle fibers. Now this is something from ex uh, lecture exam two. Remember I talked at length about chicken, right? Specifically chicken muscle. Um, so this isn't something that I'm going to point out today during the dissection, but it's something that you should know, right? This is the leg. Therefore, what kind of meat, therefore, what kind of cells are making up this muscle, right? As opposed to the breast meat over here, right? This is one color, therefore, one type of cell. And this over here is a different type of cell, okay? Um, any movable joint is called a synovial joint. We are going to look at two of them. The ball and socket is a hip joint and a hinge joint is the knee. So I want you to point out both of these types of joints um, and specifically the meniscus and a cruciate ligament within the knee. Okay. Um, again, this will be a little bit easier after uh, next week's lesson, but uh, the femur, the head of the femur and the smooth parts in the knee of the femur, lateral and medial condyles, and the tibia, fibula, and patella, right? So hopefully as we go through, you'll get a better understanding, but for now, um, we have the thigh joint, or we have the thigh bone, two shin bones, and the kneecap, okay? At the very end, I'm going to ask you to actually break a bone so that we can look inside and look at the bone marrow, as well as spongy versus compact bone. Okay, when I'm all done this today, I am going to post um, a video of this, what you're seeing right now, uh, to this playlist, right? Already there are some videos posted, right? So here's one from the fall, here's one from the summer, here's one from the summer, but from above, and here's someone else doing it, right? So I'm just going to add whatever I'm talking about today to this playlist. So you have lots of different perspectives. Right, lots of different iterations of the same content. Right, again, any questions now? All right. Well, huh, let's uh, let's get started here. Okay. Um, okay. So the chicken, I haven't even taken it out of the bag yet. So this is exactly what you are going to see um, if you get a full chicken. If if not, just bear with me. Again, bonus, you get to learn a little bit about um, quartering a chicken. All right, so you'll take your chicken out of the bag. And it's very juicy, it's okay. All right, um, so the chicken, right? Um, this is where the head would have been, right? So here's the neck. This is the breast, okay? So if the chicken was standing, um, and I'm sorry if this is a little weird, a little uncomfortable, but if the chicken was standing, the chicken would stand like this. So right here are the legs, right? Here are the wings. The head would be up in this direction. And so I give you this perspective. Um, first of all, to show you, this is the chicken's right. And this over here is the chicken's left. So tail, right side, left side. Note that the skin is on the lateral side of the chicken leg, right? So if you have just plain old legs in a package, 
okay? Um, look for the skin, right? The skin is on the lateral side, right? The knee, right? The bendy part here, the knee faces anteriorly. It faces the head, okay? So the skin is on the lateral side. The knee is pointing to the front. And so this must be right. And this must be left, okay? So I'll show you this again when I remove the leg from the chicken. Okay, um, now if you get a full broiler bird, um, there might be some goodies inside. So this is actually the neck, right? Um, I don't know what's inside. Um, uh, this is part of the gizzard. So chickens don't have teeth. And so um, what they do is they eat stuff whole and then in their um, actually stomach number three, they like grind that meat together. Um, and that's how they chew, right? Not with their mouth. So that's what that is. Um, and that's all we have. Okay. Um, if you guys have any questions, by all means, let me know. Speak up, I can hear you. Okay. All right, assuming that's good. All right. Um, so the first thing you're going to do if you have a full chicken like this is, of course, remove the the thigh and the drumstick, right? So the same thing you'd be doing if you were um, preparing this um, <clears throat> for a meal. Um, again, I like the big knives, but um, I'll kind of go back and forth to show you what you might experience as well. Okay, um, the first thing you're going to do is kind of pull the leg away from the breast, okay? And you'll see that the skin stretches and there's almost like a little lighter line, right, between the breast and the leg, okay? So what you're going to do, right, pull the leg away from the rest of the bird, okay? Take your knife and um, depending on how sharp your knife is, just slowly and gently cut the skin right here, right? So between the knee and the breast. Um, all right, uh, in general, you want slow movements with um, like moderate pressure. You don't want to hack away. That's just going to wreck the tissue. Um, and so you're really just going to drag the knife across the skin. What we can see already, right, is the white breast meat exposed, okay? Um, the leg again, still pulled away from the rest of the body. Um, we are starting to see some fascia, and I'll show you from this angle up here as well in just a moment. Um, but this slimy clear tissue is called fascia, okay? And that's essentially um, equivalent to your hypodermis, okay? So it is um, securing the skin to the underlying muscle tissue, okay? And so there's a lot of it around um, that you are going to be cutting through with your knife, okay? Everyone doing okay so far? <laughs> All right, so um, now that I've made one minor incision, um, I am going to keep on cutting the skin all the way down to where the tail would be here. Um, you can feel the pelvis bone right here. Okay, so cutting, um, again, remember where your fingers are. All right, and I purposely didn't sharpen my knives assuming that you guys are not going to have very sharp knives. And so this is kind of the, the pressure and um, you know, the, the process that you would need to go through even with a dull knife, right? Um, you want to cut all the way through the skin, all the way to the back. And you can see that I'm kind of pulling it away from the bird, right? All right so now um, this is abdominal muscle, right? We can see that it's, um, different in color than the fascia right here we can see my finger through and this over here you can't so this is abdominal muscle and this here is fascia okay all right um now i want to cut the skin all the way back to the um essentially here's the spine i want to cut all the way back to the muscle that's right by the spine Okay. 
right? So now um, we can see that um, the leg um, is moving at the joint. Um, keep in mind that the hip, which is right over here, um, the hip is a ball and socket joint. So this allows the chicken leg or the chicken to bend forward run, right? So running in this direction, but also the chicken can put its legs out to the side, right? So the ball and socket joint allows for the most mobility of any of the synovial joints throughout the body. Okay. Um, and so note that my index finger is over here. Um, and so what I am feeling when I move the chicken leg around, and I encourage you to do the same, what I'm feeling is the head of the femur, or actually the greater trochanter of the femur, the top of the femur, the epiphysis. Um, I am feeling the femur move around, right, while the pelvis over here isn't moving at all. And so that's actually going to be important. That is a point um, that you want as a reference point, right? So I could feel the femur moving. I can't feel the pelvis moving. Okay, and the reason why this is an important reference point is because you are going to take your knife and you are going to cut along, or you're actually cutting through the quadriceps and hamstring muscles right along the spine, right? Right up to the hip joint. And once we get to the hip joint, you are actually going to take the leg, pull it out to the side, and then cut the ligaments connecting it, All right? So it's actually um, a lot easier than, uh, than you would think, All right? So take my big scary knife here, and I am going to cut along the spine, all right, cutting through the muscle, okay, um, until I feel the knife hit bone. Now, don't saw on the bone, right? We don't want to wreck the bone, and also that really dulls your knife. So once you hit bone here, stop. Come in from the other side. All right, so again, the knife is purposely dull to show you guys what you could be experiencing to make it not look too easy. All right, so um, I have cut through the muscle until I feel bone here and until I feel bone on this side, All right? What I'm going to do now is I am going to put my fingers on the femur over here. My thumb, on the knee on this side. And I am going to push in this direction with my fingers and that direction with my thumb. And so what's going to happen is that the head of the femur is going to be dislocated. Okay, so this here is the femur. We have just pushed it out of the ball and socket joint. And again, if you've purchased just the leg, this has all been done for you. Um, but uh, it's kind of nice to see here is the socket of the ball and socket joint, and this here is the head or the ball of the ball and socket joint. So head of the femur, this is actually the acetabulum of the coxal bone, right? We'll get there uh, next week. Okay, so now what I want to do is take my knife and cut the rest of the hamstrings, the rest of um, the quads over here, and I am going to take my knife also through the joint. So not actually cutting the bone, right? Here's one bone, here's another. The joint has been dislocated. So you can actually um, send your knife right through this joint, okay? Okay, so chicken leg. Okay, so what we have now is a chicken leg. Remember that the knee points to the front, the skin points to the lateral side. So if this is going front and this is on the side, this must therefore be the left leg, which of course I know because I just cut it off the left side of the chicken. Okay, um, any, any questions so far? <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna change direction so maybe you can see it a little bit better. All right, and if you want me to flip back to the other angle, that is okay as well. 
All right, so um, what do we have here? Here is the knee, it points to the front. Here is the calf, right? The foot or what we would think of as the actual leg, right? The yellow scaly part would be down here on the chicken. So this is actually the ankle. Now, what you guys are going to see starting next week is that um, a lot of bones, right? For example, the tibia, which is what we're looking at here, have, have this nice smooth surface, okay? And so this nice smooth surface, these are actually called condyles, right? And the people who uh, process this bird kind of nick the condyles, right? But the smooth surface is covered with articular cartilage, right? Which is the tissue type hyaline cartilage. Yep. Um, so tibia and fibula are in here. The patella is over here. We'll see that here soon. And the femur would be up here. This is the thigh, right? So the skin or the integumentary system or the integument is this right here. Okay. Note that it's not really firmly attached to the underlying muscle, right? Um, but there is a little bit of fascia like we saw earlier, right? Note that this is nice and clear, okay? Um, so nice and clear, this is fascia. Um, chickens don't have as much subcutaneous fat as we do for better or worse, right? So this is nice and clear instead of like chunky, like um, a human fat would be. Um, now we can actually see fat here, but it is, fairly limited. Um, this tissue here, right? Note that you can't see my fingers through it. It's kind of yellow in color. Um, this is loose adipose connective tissue, right? And so there is no real like stop and start between the, the adipose and the fascia itself. It's all kind of one and the same. It's just, there's more adipose here than there is here. Okay. Um, and there's a little bit of blood, huh? Okay, um, so a couple other things before we start to remove the skin, okay? Um, all right, so this right here uh, contains blood vessels and nerves, right? So we can see that there's a little bit of a darker kind of shiny consistency here. This is allowing blood to go to the skin. Now, another fantastic place to see blood, um, which is I'm assuming where that came from, um, is on the medial side, right? So on the medial side of the chicken, again, here is the head of the femur, right? As you're going to see on the leg model, um, there are a lot of nerves, a lot of bone, or sorry, a lot of nerves and a lot of blood vessels that travel from the pelvis down into their leg um, right here. So it goes right past the hip. Okay, so if we can start to tease apart um, some of this tissue here, um, what we can see, and there's a good one, is a blood vessel. All right, so um, the blood vessel, of course, is a little bit reddish. Okay, it's really secured in here. There we go. Um, so this um, is, is kind of stringy, it is smooth, um, it might still have a little bit of blood in it like this one here, so nice and red. Um, and again, it's really close to the head of the femur, okay? So blood vessels are also on your list, right? And you'll also be able to see some, um, or possibly if we don't cut through them first, um, in the back of the knee in the popliteal region back here. So uh, I think that's all we need on the surface. Um, if you guys are looking at the list and you see that I missed something, by all means, just shout it out. Or if you need to see something different, um, let me know. Okay, so uh, now we want to look at the muscles themselves. All right, so we're going to take the skin um, and you can just tear the skin away. Um, generally that wigs people out, so I will cut the fascia, okay, that of course is very slippery, um, but cutting the fascia, um, note that there is a lot of connective tissue in the posterior knee, okay, and here's a nerve that I'm cutting through, so there's a lot going on in the posterior knee, it's going to take a little bit more oomph to get your knife, especially a dull sad knife like this one, um, actually through the tissue. 
Okay. So um, what I'm doing here is I am taking with my fingers, the skin, I am pulling it away from the muscle until we can kind of see this fascia um, kind of coming up here. I'm going to cut through the fascia. Okay. And pull a little bit more, pull a little bit more. Okay. Flip it over. Do the same thing on the other side. Again, getting rid of this fascia, the nerves, the blood vessels. Remember where your fingers are, right? <laughs> Be careful. So that is the skin, right? So if you are documenting this, you could show me the skin on the chicken leg, or you can show me the skin removed from the chicken leg. All right, so there's that. Um, now what we are seeing is the medial side of the leg. Right, again, the head of the femur. This is the ankle. So here is the knee. Okay. Um, let's look at some muscles. Okay. So remember that on the front of your thighs, the anterior side of your thighs are your quadriceps. On the back of your thigh are the hamstrings. And it's the same exact thing in the chicken. Okay. Um, so we can take our knife and we can kind of pull these muscles apart, right? Um, so here, what I'm doing is just pulling the existing muscles apart. Remember that each muscle is surrounded by an epimysium. And so it is its own independent unit. And in order to separate multiple muscles, you just have to very gently run your knife in between them, right? If anyone's hunters, which I don't expect that to be the case, but um, this is how you would process a deer or something as well. So same kind of a thing. Um, as we are or separating these muscles, we can see um, nerves, we can see uh, tendons here, right? And so um, I'm really just showing you the technique. You really don't have to separate all of the muscles out um, from each other, um, but I just want to show you how these muscles work um, here in just a moment. Okay. Um, while we're here, this is another blood vessel. Okay, so coming from the head of the femur down into the hamstring muscles. Right, so this right here is a blood vessel. Right, going across the knife. Okay. So, um, and get rid of that. All right, so this here is on the back of the thigh, right? It's attached to the shin, right? So the insertion is way down here in the shin. The origin would have been up here um, uh, on the hips, okay? Um, so when insertion is pulled towards origin in this muscle, what we can see is the leg bends, right? This is called knee flexion. Right? So the hamstrings are actually responsible for flexion of the knee. Okay, now if we look on the other side, right, so for example, let's separate out this muscle here. This should be the rectus femoris, but for your purposes right now, it is simply a quadriceps femoris muscle. It's a group of muscles on the front of your thigh. Again, I am just separating this muscle from the rest so that it moves nicely for demonstration purposes. Um, you do not have to separate the muscles out in your documentation, but of course, um, I think it helps um, to see the different muscles, right? So again, this is the medial thigh. We have looked at the hamstrings, which flex the knee, right? When insertion pulls towards origin, the chicken leg, the heel pulls back towards the tail, okay? Now, if I pull on a quadriceps muscle up here, what we would see is the chicken kicking out, right? So we'll start with a flexed and we can see the chicken leg kicks out. So this is knee extension. So 
Hamstrings on the back are going to flex. Quads on the front are going to extend. Extend and flex, right? These are antagonist muscles. Hey, any questions? Okay. Uh, I can't see your faces. I don't know if this is like really cool or really repulsive. <laughs> oh, but that's okay. Um, all right. So uh, we have looked at the skin. We've looked at the fascia and adipose. We have identified the hamstrings right on the back, the quads on the front. All right. Um, one more set of muscles, and then we're going to dig into the knee here. Um, so this is the front of the calf. So this is the shin, the crural region. This is the back of the calf. Right. So this here would be the gastrocnemius. Note, here's the back of the knee, the popliteal region. And so this entire big pretty muscle here is the gastrocnemius. Right. And we can separate this out. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm using the back of the knife. Right. I am just gently, not like jabbing into it, but gently slicing through the connective tissue on the outside to separate out this muscle. Right, so you are welcome to do this, but again, it's not absolutely critical. <laughs> not used to using knives like this, <laughs> you can't tell. All right, so, um, all right, so along this line, this is the gastrocnemius, right? So for this assignment, I would want you to point out quads, hamstrings, gastrocnemius. Okay, um, if we're good, right? If you guys are ready to see the knee, let us do so. Okay, right? so what I would recommend is taking um, essentially the ankle, right? the tibia with the fibula in here somewhere, grabbing a hold of this and flipping the leg around so that you are looking at the popliteal region. Know that there is a lot of fat in this region, right? And that's actually a human thing as well. Lots of fat right behind your knee. You need lots of padding, lots of insulation. This is a very, um, very delicate joint um, and it's really easy to mess it up. And so we have lots of extra uh, fat um, for protection. Okay, so here's the thigh, here's the calf. What I'm going to do um, is make a gentle incision with my knife straight down into the back of the knee. And I'm going to stop when I feel the bone. And I do not want to cut through the bone, right? So right in between the calf and the thigh, right? Not sawing, just gentle, consistent pressure. All right, that wasn't enough. So I'll go back and do it again. All right, so I just felt bone. I don't know if you could hear that, but that's what I just felt. All right, so um, let's take a look at some things inside. Okay, first of all, um, what I want you to see, right, is I'm pushing some of this muscle tissue down and there are some really shiny, pretty white things, right? So these are attached to muscle, right? And as we are going to, uh, hopefully appreciate soon, um, the epimysium and the extra fascia on the surface of the muscles extends beyond the muscle tissue converges down into this dense regular connective tissue that is a tendon. And so whenever we see a muscle that is um, that kind of tapers down into this lovely shiny white thing, this is a tendon. And that's another structure that you need to tell me about um, in your dissection, right? So here's a tendon, actually one of the gastrocnemius tendons. Um, and here is a tendon as well. Okay, so again, it's attached to muscle. Okay, um, this is actually a quadricep tendon. Cool, or actually no, it's a hamstring tendon. Um, you do not have to tell me all of that, but um, it's attached to muscle and therefore 
this is a tendon. Okay. Tendon and tendon. Okay. Now that's cool and all, but we're going to keep on going. Okay. So I'm going to cut through so that we can actually get down to the knee. Okay. Cut through again. Right, kind of cutting out to the lateral sides so that, or the lateral and medial side, so that I can start to just barely see some bone here. That's what I'm looking for, right? Other structures in this area, we can see a blood vessel. Okay, so this is actually your, or his, it's popliteal artery. Okay, we can see a branching out to the side, and this is actually delivering oxygenated blood all the way down to the calf and ultimately the foot way down here. Okay, so there you have that. Um, again, that's cool, but get out of the way. Okay. Coming around to the lateral side, so now I'm rotating the chicken leg. Okay, again, we can see this little fat line, right? That is right at the joint. Okay, so I'm pulling the muscle away as I am slicing through. We're almost there. We can start to see the joint capsule. Right. Um, now around the joint itself, around any synovial joint, there's going to be a ligamentous capsule. And so um, you'll feel like this right here is a lot harder than the surrounding muscle tissue. Okay, so um, that's normal. It's kind of gently slice it away. We don't want to damage the knee, right? Um, but we do want to see the knee, okay? Um, so again, spinning the leg around. All right, so this is the lateral side of the knee, right? What we're starting to be able to see is the femur, right? So this is the thigh, remember? Um, this is part of the hip joint, this is part of the knee joint. These really smooth, lovely articular surfaces are called condyles, right? And they are actually covered with the structure, articular cartilage, and the tissue, hyaline cartilage, right? So feel them with your finger. They feel so um, smooth and slippery. In fact, when you do feel them, um, if you're not wearing gloves, you can feel this like slimy goo. Um, so different slimy than this over here. Um, this is synovial fluid. It actually acts as a lubricant in your knee. Okay? And so if you damage your knee enough, you need lots of extra fluid because that synovial fluid can't keep up um, or there's a hole in the capsule or whatever. Okay, so um, you should tell me that these are the condyles Right, this is the medial side, so this is the medial condyle. The lateral condyle would be farther back here. Okay, um, uh, structures that you don't have to tell me about, but still kind of cool. Um, we can see this like flappy white thing as well. This is another ligament. This is actually a, a collateral ligament, so it's helping to stabilize the knee, so the drumstick doesn't swing around left and right. Okay, so those are collateral ligaments. We'll get there in a future lesson. So again, cool, but get out of the way. Right. So now we can see inside the knee, right? First thing I want to point out is this floppy little C-shaped thing, right? So this is actually a meniscus, right? So this is um, essentially a shock absorber for when the chicken is running around, he's big and fat, and his uh, femur is grinding down on his tibia. We don't want that to happen. And so we have these nice menisci um, as nice padding and it's fibrocartilage. So you'll feel that it's actually super, um, super tough. You can't really tear this with your fingers um, very easily, right? And that's a good thing. We want to keep those menisci. Okay. Um, another thing that we can see um, is that structure that is inside the knee. I'm gonna try to show you this here. So here's a meniscus. Um, let me get a little bit more of this tissue out of the way. There we go. <laughs> no pressure, right? It's not like everyone's watching me. 
<laughs> All right, um, so here's the meniscus. Um, if you look inside the knee, you can see this shiny white structure here. There's another shiny white structure. I don't know if you can see it, but it's this one over here, right? And they actually kind of make a big X inside the knee. Um, we do have an anterior and posterior cruciate ligament. We are, do not care about that for the chicken leg, but we can see one and two shiny white things literally inside the knee. Um, connecting the femur down to the tibia as opposed to the meniscus, which is just sitting right on top of the tibia. Okay, so cruciate ligaments here and here, and meniscus here. Okay, can everyone see that? Is that, is that okay? All right, I'm assuming no news is good news. All right, so cool stuff, that's exciting. Let's keep going. Um, now, um, all of those things were wonderful and hopefully you took a picture and you labeled the picture or you videoed, hey, this is what I just did. You know, here's that structure, here's that structure. All right, because now we are going to cut the knee, okay? Um, just like we, like I showed you with the hip, um, the joint is actually separated now because I've cut so much of that uh, stabilizing connective tissue away. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually take the knife. My hands aren't slimy. Um, I'm going to take the knife and put it between the tibia and the femur and gently cut through. And again, if you're quartering a chicken, you it, it's really that easy, right? So, um, cut enough tissue around, right? From the back of the knee, from the front of the knee, and then you can just separate the thigh from the drumstick, okay? All right, so what can we see now that I have separated these? Um, here's another view of the meniscus, okay, hooray. Um, this, I actually cut just a teeny bit off of the condyle of the femur, right? So here is a condyle, here is a condyle. Right, and because I cut a teeny bit off, you can actually start to see the spongy bone inside. Right, and it's a little bit darker, so that spongy bone is actually filled with uh, red bone marrow. Right, so this chicken was very actively growing. Okay, um, these birds are bred to live their entire lives in seven to eight weeks, and so this bird was, you know, still pretty young and still um, actively growing. So tons and tons of bone marrow here. Okay, so again, this is the femur, right? So the thigh, looking at the medial side. Here's the medial condyle and the lateral condyle. Okay, now in between the two condyles, what we can see is this nice smooth surface. Okay, the smooth surface, as we're going to learn, um, is where the patella, right, your kneecap is actually going to slide. Right, so every time you and or the chicken bends their leg, right, this little guy here is going to slide over this patellar surface. Again, really smooth, covered with articular cartilage. Okay, so this white thing here, um, what you're physically looking at now is fat, but um, if you squeeze it, it's really hard, right? So um, I'm going to pull this away just a little bit so you can see it. This is a fat pad, and this nice shiny thing here, that is the patella, okay? So patella, femur, both of those um, are things that you need to show me on uh, your documentation, okay? All right, so um, now that we've seen the patella and the femur, what I would recommend doing is getting all of the muscle off, okay? So you can, you can physically pull it off, but um, I would re recommend that you just pull the muscle away, just like we've been doing with the skin and everything else. Gently slice through the muscle. Okay, so here are the thigh muscles. Nice stir fry there, hooray. Um, and we can start to see the bone now. Yep. 
All right, so um, the reason I isolated the bone for you um, is because another thing that I would like you to do um, is show me compact bone, spongy bone, and marrow. Now, um, of course, I nicked the condyle a little bit here, so you can do it that way. Um, another thing, um, which is actually what we usually recommend, is actually breaking the femur. Okay, and so this is the longest, strongest bone of the body. Um, and so if you have um, kitchen scissors, you can break through it with scissors. I do not personally own them. And so I just take it to the corner of the desk and break it. And I'm sure you heard that. I'm sorry, that's an awful sound. But um, what I have just done is I broke the femur. Right? I made a little nick on it with the knife. Um, so a little point of weakness. And then I took it to the edge of my counter and I broke it in half. And so what we can see now is the bone marrow Okay, so it's super squishy on the inside. So this is bone marrow. Okay, um, we can see the compact bone shell, which you'll learn more about tomorrow. Um, and um, I don't know if you can hear that, but um, even though it's red, when I run my knife along this structure, it feels like bone, right? So this is actually spongy bone that is filled with red bone marrow. Okay, so the spongy bone here and this is the medullary cavity that's filled with the gooey red bone marrow. Now remember, when you are first growing, um, you do not have yellow marrow in your medullary cavity. Instead, it's chock full of red bone marrow because you need so much blood because you're growing so darn fast, particularly in the case of this chicken. Um, so red bone marrow in the medullary cavity when you are growing, this uh, will be replaced by yellow marrow as soon as you're done growing, okay? Spongy bone, compact bone. Um, questions about that? Right. Almost done, guys. <laughs> All right, so um, the last two that we haven't looked at yet um, are the tibia and the fibula, okay? This is the medial side, so the tibia would be on the medial side. This is the lateral side, so the fibula would be on the lateral side. Now we can of course see um, the condyles of the tibia, or actually these are the condyles of the tibia, right way up here. Um, you can see the end of the tibia. And so the fibula should be underneath these muscles right here. Okay, so just like we did with the femur, um, you can, can remember where your fingers are. We can remove the muscle, at least from the lateral side of the leg. All right, you can hear, or maybe you can hear me cutting through lots of tendons, lots of connective tissue that is pretty tough. Um, also, all right, just as a reminder, this gooey stuff here is fascia. Okay, you can see through it. Um, here is the muscle. We can see the white ends of the muscle. That's part of a tendon. This is part of a tendon down here too. All right, a tendon, all right, a tendon. Okay, so as we're going through this, we can see all of the stuff that we've seen so far. Um, lots of tendonous structures down here, which have already been cut um, when the leg was removed. When I say the leg, I mean the foot. All right, so we're starting to see bone again. Okay, here is bone. Here are some blood vessels. Okay, blood vessels right here still actually have a little bit of blood in them. Um, and um, this thick bone right here is the tibia. We can feel that it's connected up here and down here, but next to it, is the fibula, right? So scraping away some of this extra tissue, right? And finally, we are able to see 
an extra little bone, right? So I can wiggle this bone around, right? This is the fibula. Okay, so put my knife in between the tibia and the fibula, cutting away from myself. All right, so now I've used my knife to remove the fibula, right? So here's the shiny head of the fibula. And this down here is still covered with a little bit of muscle and other tissue. Um, this is the diaphysis of the fibula. Okay. So um, again, tibia, big strong shin bone, fibula, skinny shin bone, femur, thigh bone. The calf muscle is the gastrocnemius, the one that we care about right now. Um, on the thigh, the front, actually the, the front muscles are the quadriceps femoris, the posterior muscles are the hamstrings. Okay, and with all of that, it's all covered by the skin, which also contains adipose tissue, okay, some yellow chunky stuff, as well as fascia. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> Right. Um, <clears throat> with that, I am going to stop recording.